So, sir, as we know that uh, in arrhythmic disorders, arrhythmia is one of the commonest disease having the incidence of around 30, 30 to 33 percentage. Right. So, you have such a vast experience then. So, in your routine practice, how do you look at the atrial fibrillation for the diagnosis point of view? Look, if I have to look for atrial fibrillation for a diagnosis practice, take my words, single, simple, most important test is electrocardiogram. Practically available every nook and corner of a country yes. and which can be done even by a basic medical physician okay. who can diagnose atrial fibrillation. No big machinery is required, no big gametes are required, no big color Doppler's machines are required and that is it is a simple test is ECG. And one a point I would like to make in this point is we should always take a rhythm of ECG Okay. at the end of doing an ECG so that we categorically say that the patient is in atrial fibrillation and lack of presence of P wave in ECG is characteristic diagnostic of atrial fibrillation. Perfect. So, I think uh, it is not so much uh, difficult that ECG is available everywhere. Now, it is in the corner of the India is also the ECG machines and the, even the physicians are also now well uh, aware with this particular kind of very the process, well very well trained. Well trained. Yeah. So, I, there is there should not be an issue, but now the, the, the thing is that the, so what could be the possible etiological factors for the developing the atrial fibrillation? Well, India has been uh, I say a largest country which has seen atrial fibrillation for last 60 to 70 years. The reason was for a long time was valvular, rheumatic heart disease was prevalent in our country, is still prevalent in our country. So, we can broadly define these atrial fibrillation into non-valvular and valvular. We have seen valvular atrial fibrillation because of rheumatic heart disease giving rise to atrial uh, mitral stenosis, mitral regurgitation, large inlet dilatation and giving rise to atrial fibrillation. Over a period of time, as the prosperity developed in India, we have seen more people suffering from non-valvular atrial fibrillation, all because of aging, we are, life has become bigger, yes. longer and healthy also and maintainable if we develop some illness. So, aging, hypertension, diabetes, obstructive sleep apnea, hypothyroidism and most important thing is obesity yes. and all these factors have led to further a new category of an atrial fibrillation which is known as non-valvular atrial fibrillations which we have started seeing for last 8 to 10 years now okay. more commonly. Yes. So, definitely sir you have uh, mentioned very well there is a non-valvular and valvular two parts of the AF and now then because of the awareness of the disease and the uh, uh, with the long age and the multiple comorbid conditions, non-valvular AF incidences are also were increasing, increasing now by leaps, leaps and bounds. And, yes. So, uh, regarding the non-valvular AF, uh, there is, as per the data, is one of the commonest complication is a stroke. Okay. Uh, so, how do you have found that the, when the patient has the non-valvular AF and the chances of developing stroke with various risk factors, what is your experience based on? Certainly, if a person of all these comorbid conditions, if they develop an atrial fibrillation, they have a very high chances of developing a stroke. Everybody knows this fact, lot of data is available which need not be discussed at this platform and if they develop an atrial fibrillation and they develop a stroke, they have a lifelong comorbidity yes. which the people have to carry on for a longer time. Our quest is how can we prevent that stroke yes. because of an atrial fibrillation. First thing is either we revert the stroke or this atrial fibrillation to normal sinus rhythm, give them anticoagulant and say thank you. But this has to be done with correction of a comorbid conditions Condition. like condition control of hypertension, diabetes, obesity, uh, sleep apnea syndrome and other factors. Obviously, aging cannot be controlled in any way. We can only modify aging by remaining healthy and adopting a good lifestyles. Especially in this kind of people who are aging and they have the uh, atrial fibrillation, we want to prevent them a stroke by giving them conventional or a newer anticoagulants where the slang language has come as NOAC so that they are prevented for getting that unusual or 
preventable complication of atrial fibrillation. Okay. So, uh, definitely that you mentioned that regarding the management part, the control of atrial fibrillation, it is very, very uh, required. So, uh, you have uh, the first chance, uh, first chance what you will take to revert the atrial fibrillation right. with the to the normal sinus rhythm and meanwhile, you should start the uh, oral anticoagulants whether it is uh, initially there was a vitamin K antagonist, now the newer generation of the oral anticoagulants are also available. But sometimes sir, you in your practice you must have also find that you have tried very aggressively and tried to revert the patient to the normal sinus rhythm, but sometimes it may be failed. Many so, times. Many times. Sorry, yeah, many, many times, times. Many times. So, in this condition and you have also mentioned the stroke prevention is very, very critical and very, very required also. Well. In fact, if you look at the uh, true scenario for s stroke prevention in atrial fibrillation, anybody who is more than 65 years yes. of age, yes. we have to give them anticoagulants. Yes, yes. perfect. So, in this case. Yes. This is, if somebody does not prescribe, it is not doing an ethical practice. That is true. That is true. So, in this condition when the patient is not reverting to the normal sinus rhythm and still you have to uh, do the treatment with the stroke prevention and atrial fibrillation, what could be your uh, management? Well, uh, till date like I can say that uh, we have been using a time tested vitamin K and uh, interlogs from a long time. They are very good, time tested, lot of data which is available on them, but the most important thing is we have to maintain that INR. Incidence of bleedings are pretty high. Compliance of a patient is equally bad. I do not say that everybody is not compliant, lot many people are compliant, but apart from taking a drug, they have to get their regular INR done. And which INR monitoring is not easily possible if we are looking for a diagnosis of atrial fibrillation at corner of a country, okay. corner of a state yes. in India where the facility itself are not present and even if the facilities are present, they are not up to the mark for detection of a proper IRR levels. Yes. This is my specific words. And this is what we have been facing, what exactly happens if the patient is taking this older or prior generation vitamin K analogs, what exactly happens? They have been taking a drug, but they are not able to maintain their INR. On the contrary, they have to look at many food habits which they have to go for it or avoid them. Yes. They are also not able to do it. So, either they left with lower INR levels or they go to higher INR levels. In terms, on one side the drug is not effective, on other side is given as to bleeding complications. Yes. And that is why I feel that newer generation, this newer, newer generation oral anticoagulants have some large role to play definitely in country like ours. So, it is a very practical point that sir you have raised that uh, oral drugs available they are effective, but the monitoring of INR is the biggest issue in India and uh, the NOAX may be the best solution, it, they are the best solution to uh, for the prevention of stroke in atrial fibrillation. So, sir in India since last 5 to 6 years the different version, different types of the NOAX is available like Debigatron, Rivaroxaban and Epixaban. You must have used the, all the kind of uh, drugs in may, uh, in your current practice. What is your experience with these different drugs well, and how you are going to individualize when suppose if you if you choose one uh, newer generation for this patient then what is your criteria? You look I have to choose a newer generation oral anticoagulant drugs, I have to look for a couple of things. The first and foremost thing is the compliance of a patient in the form like how many tablets he has to take one day. Yes. Second, the cost of the drug what is the average cost for a drug for that patient? And third, do I have to really look for INR in this subset of populations? So, these three criteria will make a lot of difference because they have to take this drug for lifelong. If I am looking at an aging person who is a atrial fibrillation, he is not going to be drug for one day. Yes. I say is drug to eternity for him. For him. So, all these factors makes a lot of difference. And looking at all these three drugs which you have quoted a couple of minutes back, I feel like couple of drugs which are really made mark is one of them is Rivoxaben. Okay. And which is really a good drug, one time in a day, no need for monitoring INR, but the cost is little prohibitive as on today and I am sure as the time goes on, more and more drugs are being consumed, so obviously the things will come down really co convenient for the population at large. Dr. Gupta has said very, very well and in detail and there is an actual practical scenario in Indian condition regarding the atrial fibrillation and the stroke prevention. 
older generation molecules are effective they are good but the INR monitoring is not possible up to that mark in corner of the each and every uh, part of the India and to replace or to give the better solution of them no X are a better solution but again for the better compliance and the lifelong treatment the cost is also one of the biggest factor so that is also one of the considerable factor when you are uh, you are using the no X in atrial fibrillation patients so with this note sir we are ending our discussion and thanks a lot for Thank your, you all your much. valuable comments and expert opinion that is literally grateful Thank for you the very much and we look forward to have sure. have more. Thank you. Thanks a lot.